Ahoy, Captains! Spring is in full bloom, and we can't wait to share all the changes, improvements, and content additions in this update. Prepare for the new Planet Clash event, a loyalty reward program with plenty of gifts, new rank seasons, and more. Besides that, the mobile version of World of Warships Legends launches globally in the first week of the update. Stay tuned! Starting with the campaign ship of the update, Carl the 14th Yuhan is a pan-European battleship at Tier 8, and she's a brawler that can use long-range torpedoes similar to the pan-European destroyer line. She's most efficient against cruisers thanks to the fast reload of her guns and her secondary range, and she can handle battleships well with wise use of her torpedoes. Besides that, she has sonar to help battle against destroyers. There are lots of rewards on your way to obtaining the final campaign prize. You can receive bureau points, a commander, Japanese cruiser crates, and a lot more. Set sail and start your journey next Monday. This update marks five years since the open beta release of our game. What a voyage it has been. Plenty of rewards are planned for our devoted captains. Some of them will be delivered to your account after obtaining a special free in-game bundle, while others can be received after completing a special mission within the same bundle. Make sure to watch our dedicated video about the loyalty program on this channel, where we'll reveal all the details about the rewards for each year. Stay tuned. Talking about the new cruiser line, Agano, Gokusei, Omono, and Shimanto. Japanese beauties ranging from tiers four to seven are coming to early access, boasting powerful torpedoes typically associated with destroyers, good speed and concealment, plus the defensive AA fire consumable to avoid plane attacks from above. You can add these cruisers to your port after opening the new Japanese cruisers crates. The Japanese cruisers big crate features a guaranteed drop mechanic for early access cruisers. A nice addition to these crates is that they also offer you an opportunity to receive tier six premium cruiser, Maya. A tanky cruiser with a huge HP pool, main battery reload booster, a repair party, and deadly torpedoes. In addition to the ships themselves, we prepared a stylish black and white camouflage to make them stand out on the battlefield. Check out the store to get these camouflages. And what's a new ship without an effective commander standing behind it? Matsuji Ijui, a decorated naval officer, can be obtained via a new dedicated calendar. He's a perfect match for the new cruisers with his very fun feature for lovers of torpedo shooting, a special legendary skill called Killing Distance. It makes your torpedoes a more serious threat to enemies. The longer your torpedoes run underwater, the more damage they inflict on your opponent. Obtain him throughout the three-week calendar with two more weeks to catch up so you can enter the next update prepared. Our space-themed event comes with a new fun game mode, new commander guises, plus new ship skins and ships to accompany your journey. For three weeks starting next Monday, dive into our special themed event from the main menu to enter a cosmic port and battle in the new fun mode. We'll reveal the rules in a dedicated video at the start of the update. Starting from the fourth week of the update on April 16th, we begin the first of two new ranked battle seasons, featuring five versus five matches for battleships and cruisers with only one destroyer allowed per team. There's also one more great piece of news for hardcore players who have some steel saved in the stash. Japanese Tier 8 battleship Dyson makes her entrance into the legendary waters and can be acquired for steel from the start of the update. Before the global release of the mobile version, a significant amount of preparation has been done. We've reworked the UI for smoother game control while maneuvering ships with your touchscreen. Commander guises have been added along with all the effects, unique voiceovers, and legendary skills from the console version. Discount coupons can now be used in the mobile version of our store. Additionally, a few technical improvements have also been implemented. Check our social media channels for the official announcement regarding the game's release date. A few quality improvements in our game are what keep the fun going, right? In this update, we've added fleet call signs near nicknames in battles and leaderboards. For those of you looking for brothers in arms, we've included the looking for fleet button in the main menu to indicate that you're open to invitations. Make friends during battles on our legendary seas. A significant number of balance changes have been made to various ships in the game. The Italian destroyer line and French large cruiser line, plus some battleships have been improved. Take a look at the balance changes article and see for yourself. Moreover, some spawn points on large maps have been revised for more dynamic battles. Jump into battles on the maps Shatter, Haven, and Trap. In this video, we revealed only a part of what's coming this spring. Buckle up, because next season promises to be even hotter on our legendary waters. 
Leave your opinion in the comments on how you like this update. Get your console or mobile device ready for next week and turn the tide. Hello and welcome. We're coming on to five years since the game entered early access. And this is going to be a, a big stream, so you're going to have to bear with us. This update has come absolutely crammed with content that we're probably not going to fit in this two-hour stream window. But I am not alone. I am also joined by our beloved... Prince Bloop. How are you doing, everyone? So, uh, sorry, the camera delay got me a little bit. But how is everybody doing? I'm here um, and happy to be celebrating the five-year anniversary-ish um, birthday anniversary. It's not technically the anniversary, but it's also or technically a birthday. It's... It, it, we have two. <laughs> so it's, we're celebrating the first one this year. Yes, we're coming on to five years since the game entered early access. And throughout these five years, we have seen some tremendous changes, both yeah. gameplay, visually. I mean, if you ever find videos of the game five years ago, it looked yeah. very different to what it is these days. But this update has no shortage of content, that's for sure. I actually had to bring notes with me to make sure I don't forget anything. So I have a table full of notes here. <laughs> so I'm going to get the battlefield thing. It's all a comment earlier about how uh, oceans can't be battlefields, but in the words of Master and Commander, Napoleon is now the master of Europe. Oceans are now battlefields. So Only England remain against them or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Only the, or the Royal Navy stands alone or whatever it is. <laughs> yes. So, marking this, we have a lot of content to go through. So I have a short, not so short list here, which are the things we're hopefully going to go over throughout this stream. So this update is introducing Carl the 14th Johan as our campaign reward. Uh, we're introducing the Planet Clash April event, which will be available already right now for you to play and try out, where you play uh, to stop a the All Destroyer, and you can earn different rewards throughout progressing and reaching certain milestones. We have the, the uh, Japanese light cruisers in early access, which are heavily torpedo-focused. Uh, we have the calendar where you can earn the commander for free with his unique legendary skill specializing in torpedoes for these cruisers. Yeah. Uh, we have our five years strong rewards, which rewards players for how long they've been playing our game based on when you first logged in during the game's full release. Um, so people who are coming on four years will now receive our newly buffed tier four destroyer cyclone, which is an exclusive reward. And our five-year players will receive the exclusive reward, the Tier 5 Commonwealth Premium Cruiser. Yeah, yeah. My, or Masori. Mysore. Yeah. I think that's Masori. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, uh, which? But, like, and the Cyclone buff is huge. It's almost yeah. like a, like, it's like 10 seconds down to 6.5 seconds. So that's what, like, a well, 35% reload buff? Which is Yeah, it, it, it received some so love, this, she, this update. Yeah, she... she <clears throat> She needed it. <laughs> so it's worth checking out. Yep. In addition, we're coming with two seasons of Ranked after our April mode, uh, where you can obtain some rewards and steel and such. Speaking of steel, we're introducing Dyson into the Forge. Uh, we have a flurry of balance changes, including a much needed buff to Italian destroyers. You'll now find their reloads are slightly better. Uh, because we all know that, that SAP usually accommodates with a with a slightly longer reload. Uh, this update will also mark the release of Mobile, to which we've also now added the support for store coupons and full commander support on mobile devices. So you can now equip commander guises and skins and things like that and hear the unique voice lines and so on. Uh, we haven't forgot the vocal players and the hardcore players. We're introducing improvements for fleets. To help fleet leaders and newer players come together, we've introduced a looking for fleet feature where players looking to join fleets can mark their account as I am looking for a fleet. And all the fleet leaders will see a list of all the players who have set this looking for fleet status and they can invite to their fleet through that and help build their rosters. Also adding tags, so you can now see fleet tags in battle, on the leaderboards, basically everywhere. This was a much requested feature. Um, and we're going to see a huge flurry of really big sails this update. So we're going to see a large number of ships, two ships a week. In fact, seeing a 50% discount throughout the course of this update with two new ships every week. Yep. We'll go into what these ships will be later on in the stream because I don't want to keep this intro too long. <laughs> but uh, on that note, we'll we'll dive in and start showing the content. Yep, yep. So um, I think 
let's uh, start off with showing off fleets. Um, can you? Um, yes, I can. So the fleet recruitment thing. Um, oh, and, let me get my controller. Oh, here, just shoot it to me. Because oh. I'm an officer. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> the so when, if you're an officer or a, or a clan leader, um, this is very important for you. In your fleet tab, you now have in the recruitment tab, mm -hmm. you can look at a bunch of different names of people who have marked themselves looking for fleet, um, and you can even open them and see what their stats are. So I remember a lot of people were asking, "Oh no, like how am I going to tell if they they have their if they have their stats or not?" Um, Answer is you can tell if they have the you can tell what their stats are before you recruit them. So um, if that matters to you. Um, we like we took care of you. So yep. the um, so this is a huge feature, and of course your um, clan call sign will appear everywhere in battle now. So people will know who you are, or maybe you can keep an eye out for people that you need to be care um, uh, people you need to be careful for of. <laughs> yeah. So now if you're playing the triple division full of hardcore fleet members, you'll see that you are playing against a triple division of hardcore fleet members, which yep. is interesting. Yeah. Yep. So uh, I don't even know where we're going to start. We have such a huge huge update um we could play a quick battle of the april mode and then move on to everything else there will be a dedicated april mode stream next week where you'll see two people of us on team i'm not sure who's going to be on it yet yeah. two of us will probably be on there playing the mode and talking to people and maybe inviting some of you into the divisions to play some games so that that will be the focus for next week but we will play a, a quick round just to show because it is the update stream and it's part of the update um, well, I guess we'll do that first. All right, let's lead off with it. You know what we're going to do? Actually, if uh, we can probably pull some people in for a, a quick game. Yeah. If three of you want to go into Looking for Division and then leave in our chat that you're in Looking for Division, we can invite you if you want to play a game. Oh, cool. Yeah, I don't have any upgrades at all. I'm a Division leader, so we'll just go in at, um, uh, on easy, I guess. Sure. So. Uh, so, easy. I need to quickly make my ship build. Yeah, so if you want to join us, guys, um, this is your opportunity. So just go ahead and um, get ready um, for the April Fool's mode and um, start looking for division, and I'll send you invites. Yeah, we only have room for three people, <laughs> and we're only playing one round of this probably. So uh, let us know. I think I'm going to play Zaya on easy, although we're going to have no skills unlocked. So probably just gonna start off with the resistance of futile skill yeah so how are you all we're coming on five years like i, I can't stress enough like <laughs> this is such a long long time i feel like every time i i review the game and how things have moved so quickly yeah. i always just look back and think man it's gone so quick yeah i recognize these names so i'll go ahead and grab them okay I don't know who's in chat and who's not. Sorry, guys. So. It's, uh, okay. Well, we have our team, so we'll, uh, we'll jump in. Yep, yep. So. Sounds good. Um, so we have a cruiser. I'm going to run. Um, I'll run the Avenger. Does anyone know what ship you will get for completing level five? Ooh, do I spoil it or do we keep it a secret? Um, people have already figured it out. So okay, so it is the uh, the cruiser, the, the the Soviet cruiser Mikoyan. Yeah, Mikoyan, I think. Mikoyan. Yeah, which is essentially think of it as a Kirov with twin 180 millimeter guns instead of triples. Um, so don't expect it to be well armored, but um, expect the guns to have very good performance for you. Mm. Yo yo. Okay, your host, I think. So yep. you have to start. So Let's take it away. <laughs> oh no. Can you play Mika in today? Oh, I mean, you say that, but like I literally had to bring notes because of everything we have to show. So. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe they can show Miko Yan on the actual stream for the mode. We'll, we'll get it in if we can fit it in. But yeah. we, we have so much to show today that I don't think we're going to finish everything we're supposed to show. So yeah. uh, the, the event is easy. Sounds like you haven't gotten to the hard part yet. Yeah. Yeah. So the uh, the. <laughs> the 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 event, especially whenever you get into the harder tiers, you're going to be talking about seconds remaining to even try try to finish it. So, um, it is possible. We do know that it is possible to um, to to complete it. So, um, but it is going to take some serious dedication to get to get through some it. Some of our super testers beat it, but yeah. it wasn't 
a uh, easy victory from what mm -hmm. I'm aware. And if if you do manage to get it, you will actually earn enough to um, get the uh, Achilles. I'm just going to show the the battle leaderboard right now, so you can see in game now. Fleet tags are uh, in the roster, which is very nice, pretty good, pretty nice. So what are the the objectives? Thirty minutes, phases, ships, and shields. Okay. Yeah. So as a battleship player, I do highly recommend using your. Uh, basically orbital strike ability on, against the destroyers because it will just one shot them and that saves everybody a whole bunch of pain the cruiser has the ability to uh to break shields it has charged main battery reload booster and a radar admittedly the radar uh, loses its value in the higher difficulties but the, the ap for this ship is so potent like um uh, you very rarely have reason to use he in these lower difficulties like no matter what i'm shooting like, you'll see that my ap is generally penetrating and doing reasonable damage because of how strong the penetration skills are for this, for this commander oh running the cruiser yeah the cruiser AP is monster yeah I'm but the just cruiser is very squishy being so careful of my my citadel right now so i don't want to lose a chunk yeah. of health this early yeah, the battleship too, so there you go yeah okay so we're coming on to the old destroy now so as you begin to take his damage down, he may teleport and relocate to another position and continue to summon, you know, additional minions to fight you. And he does have an ability to uh, shoot uh, orbital strikes from space. Oh, he's shooting at me. <laughs> Almost took all my shields up. Yep. Um, and the, you'll notice that this is a, is it Grosser Curve First? Yeah, it's, a, it's like yep. a Giga Grosser Curve It's a modified Giga Grosser Curve First. It's much bigger with a bigger health pool. And you'll notice it has two additional guns that it's making full yeah. use of shooting me. So it has uh, one turret, two, three, four, five, six. Six turrets. Imagine, imagine the, the like, imagine the Fuso Tower meme with a gun on top of the Fuso <laughs> Tower applied to the Grosser Curve first, and it, it's pretty much what this is. This, uh, this Grosser Curve first is uh, there. We go. He was just shooting me, and it was pain. Okay, it looks like we're going to the right. So. And as now we, as we can see, he's now you know deploying his uh, orbital strikes, which yeah. will sink us as he flees. Dodge. So the cruiser has three skills, as I mentioned. It has the ability to recharge its shields instantly, a main battery reload booster that increases uh, reload, and I believe damage against shields and a radar. Yep. So I'm popping the radar now. We can see where all the minions are spawning. Yeah, and the the battleship gets basically a like burst shield recharge ability plus a. Um, a orbital strike of its own which is highly effective against destroyers you can basically just one tap them um, as soon as you see them which i'm sure is every battleship player's dream and so enjoy it while you can in the higher difficulties it plays a big role for the battleship to use its ability to sink the destroyers because those destroyers spotting can prove super fatal for your allied destroyers who will no doubt just get obliterated if they're spotted yeah. Looks like a reskinned Halloween event. Um, no, this event is actually completely developed, ground up by our own developers. Um, the essentially this was given or given to or given to one of our teams as a special task of, hey guys, go ahead and make April Fools happen. So the uh, the whole event is is, is their baby, and um, they should be very proud of it because it's pretty awesome. You are fighting a, a, a fat GK, yeah. With big health, big guns. Big health, more guns. I mean, it's, it's ultimately just another cooperative PvE experience. Yeah. <laughs> the Halloween mode resonated really, really well. The so boss rush. I think the team were just looking to try and find another like cooperative PvE event that people would enjoy. And uh, if popular, this event offers a whole new, you know, story arc that could be expanded into, and, and so on. is the AI, so if you shoot torpedoes, they start dodging. Yep. Building you for a bit so they can see your gameplay. Oh no, right when I'm going to get orbital strike. <laughs> can I get out of here? I'm fine. Mm. I can yep. pet his nose. I, 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 out of there. Yeah, as the battleship player, like, you're, like, m the most difficult thing you'll have to run into most likely is dodging orbitals. Because 
you're in a you're in a kind of a super ramagi uh, which is not necessarily known for being very agile so making full use of this ap shooting the noses of battleships gonna make 12 full pens or over pens of damage now i'm gonna switch to emp rounds so i can work on the old destroyer shields yeah Let's get a bit closer. The whole event is uh, really close range. Yep. Sorry there, son of Halligan. Real quick. I'm getting 2,900 damage a shell and I'm just landing every shell on this <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he's shooting at me. Okay, he's good. Yep. Mm, get that battleship out of here. You go nowhere. <laughs> You're going nowhere. Gotta, gotta love Hulk Hogan. I've got a friend who can just do the imitation basically perfectly. trying to also read the questions. I don't have a chat on my side for some reason, so I'm kind of like having to do my best to look over. Yeah, well, I and mean, yeah, we're kind of focusing on the mode, although we have yeah. a, a like few seconds of peace at the moment. What is that monster with guns in the superstructure? It is yeah. the fu it is the Fuso Tower. Giga Kurt 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 yeah. first. Yeah. All destroyer. <laughs> Giga first. <laughs> the whole destroyer. <laughs> like I don't I, I see no gods thinking. up here other than me. <laughs> so how can make this shit more intimidating? So how many guns does that make it? Uh, it's at least 15. Oh, no, there's two turrets, so it's 18 guns. Ooh. Macho man Randy Savage. Oh, yeah, good point. Not Hulk Hogan. God. Am I the only one that calls the Orbital Strikes Hammer of Dawn? That's a Gears, that's Gears of War, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But I also know there's something in Halo called the Hammer of Dawn, or along those lines. It's um, one of the ships. Halo, Halo or... Um, crap, I can't remember what the uh, what the Dawn ship is in Halo. But the... Um, is it Hammer of Dawn 4? I, I think so. I think... It's ha Hammer of something. I think there is a Hammer of Dawn Halo ship, but there's also a Hammer of Dawn Gears of War or well, Laser Strike. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think of the Gears of War name, because I've, I've only played Gears 2. Oh, um, that's disappointing, really? Yeah, I've only played Gears 2. Why? So, uh, why? Because I, di I didn't grow up with an Xbox. <laughs> oh, it feels bad, man. For, for those of you who didn't know, I didn't get to... Or Pillar of Autumn and Forward Under Dawn. Forward Under Dawn, of course, yeah. Um, is the Dawn, Dawn Halo ship. Um, for those who didn't know, I didn't grow up with video games. Um, so um, I was, or basically my parents were of the generation of, um, of video games will rot your brains or turn them into mush. So, so you I, are working in games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> living, living the childhood you couldn't have, basically. Yeah, living the dream. Uh, <laughs> the, yeah, and so I really didn't get access to much video games at all until about 2010, 2011. So... Um, Basically, my hmm. first, my first video game that I basically got myself was um, Star Wars Battlefront Two, the original one, two thousand five, um, and then the second one that I got, which I got for, as a Christmas present, was Halo Combat Evolved. Ooh. But the thing is, I got them in like two thousand nine, two thousand ten, so like nobody was playing it anymore, and I had dial-up internet at the time, so it was just literally just replaying the campaign over and over and over. Halo again. Two, back in the day, online was like. <laughs> Uh, I was quite young Formative at the time. years. So I, I come into the fray right around the launch of Halo 3 properly. Yeah, those were the days, dude. <laughs> those were the days. I think my first ever game was Final Fantasy X. That was the first game I ever played. Oh, yeah. And then I went back and played the ones beforehand. The, no, the first game I ever played was um, Dangerous Dave in the Pirate's Cove on MS-DOS. My grandparents had a, like, 1986, like... Um, MS DOS computer of some kind, um, with um, with je it had like a, whe a Wheel of Fortune game and Dangerous Dave on it. So I, I became a like a Dangerous Dave like um, aficionado at the time. That was it. 
I think what my favorite game growing up as a kid was probably Need for Speed Most Wanted. I, I was like pouring unlimited hours into that as a kid. Yeah. Anyway, dude, like, you, you think about it, five years is a really long time. Yeah. Like, I've, that means I've been at the company now almost three years. And, um, well, yeah, you've been playing for more than five years. Yeah, now, I've, been playing since, I've been playing since Alpha. I've been with this game since the very beginning. Yeah. Yep. Back when uh, you only had three tech trees with three battleships in Tier 7. You had Iowa, Vanguard, and uh, the Japanese Tier 7. Yeah, Amagi, yeah. Amagi, yeah. And everyone complained that Vanguard was so bad. I remember my friends... <laughs> because Vanguard was so bad. I remember my friends literally sending customer support tickets, just asking to refund Vanguard because it was so bad. <laughs> 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 and they were basically told, no, cope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, that's in early access. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good days. Trying to dodge torpedoes from these uh, destroyers, probably. Yeah, I got, I got 20 seconds before my next uh, orbital. So. <clears throat> oh god, the the all destroyer is uh, a bit spicy. Why is it spicy? Uh, destroy this. We don't even have to kill the ads. We'll just finish the all destroyer, and I think we should have five stars. True. Yep. Oh no, we have to. Destroy one more of our minions. Okay, we're good. let's get that galaxy yeah, thing. Yeah, get him out of the way. And then just go for the... No! Okay, we just got it in time. Nice. Yeah, yeah let's let's catch up on chat a little bit. So Yeah, we, sorry we, if you, we, we've neglected you yeah, for the yeah, last. Yeah. If you guys have been asking questions this entire time, we've been focused. So um, so we'll take a minute here and, and uh, talk with chat. But here we go. We got our five stars here. So um, in order to like progress... Let me put on you. Um, on you. Yeah. In order to progress further in the event, you're going to need to try and get five stars, and you'll get rewards for doing so. Um, and um, that will, of course, benefit you, and you can progress further and get into later modes, and also upgrade the commanders. Make sure you upgrade your event commanders, because some of their abilities are completely broken, and, uh, which is intended, because these are not regular commanders. These are for the game mode, and they're, so they're sci-fi and super. And, they're really strong. Some yeah. of them skills are like... Yeah, <laughs> can you imagine? Yeah, and um, what's the ship you get from the event? You get the Achilles, which this is based on the Oland, um, which is the tier six um, pan European destroyer, um, premium destroyer for um, and uh, named Oland. Um, but it does have some changes. It ha um, it is um, faster. It is forty knots instead of thirty five knots, which is much faster. However, it trades a little bit of its main gun, um, main battery reload speed and uh, range just a little bit of it um, as compensation for it. So it's kind of a super fast, uh, more torpedo focused version of Oland. So yeah, this opportunity to get yourself an Oland. Indeed. A nice Oland with a nice skin. Um, and I saw a question right at the beginning of the, of the stream actually. Um, what is all the Where does all the experience go from the um, April 1st event? Is from um, all the experience will, have, um, will transfer to your Albany, your, yeah. tier, your tier one American cruiser. So two by two gun layout, yes. Two by two. Yep. And you get the super cool spaceport where you can see the whole ship, the whole yep. draft. Yep. yep. Which is very, very nice. Uh, mobile don't have the port though. Only, yep. only consoles. Can you earn the Achilles for free? Uh, mm, yes. We don't really want to say you can get it for free because mm, it's a it's, it's very a, difficult. It is extremely difficult to do so. So, so. you like you will basically you will need a team of five players working together. You need you're gonna need a plan. You're going to need basically perfect execution. Think of it as like a really hardcore raid boss in an MMO in like World of Warcraft or something. Uh, on like day one, you're going to have to figure it out. Figure out how things are spawning. What you need. What you need to have as your ship setups. Because you have to have one of each type of ship. But you can have a different composition. You could have three cruisers. You could have three battleships. Or you could have a mixture like two battleships and two cruisers and one destroyer. Or you could have three destroyers. And so you'll have to figure out what works best, and figure out what's the best builds to run, and then do it perfectly, and then you can finish finish it all. And we if had, you finish it all, then you can get Achilles for free. We had but one team of super testers who were playing it for 15 straight hours, and they were mapping out their routes on the map, like on, on Microsoft Paint or something, and planning their strategy like to that yep. level of depth. 
yep. to beat it. But they did beat it. But, but it's more of a case of you get as far as you can, and that will discount the ship. If you are able to clear the whole thing, you'll get the ship. Although it, it is absolutely not for the casual player. Yeah, it is very difficult to achieve this. Yeah. So, so, so good luck to all you who attempt it, and um, and kudos if you do. So yeah, it is it is absolutely bragging rights if you can finish all all nine difficulties, yep. as it was with the the first Halloween event as well. So. Yep. <laughs> Uh, question: Is the new update will have doubloon challenges? You're referring to doubloon week. This is week three, I believe. Yeah, in, it's, in it's usually either week two or well, actually, no, it won't have any doubloon challenges this time because the doubloon challenges will be tied into the calendar. Yeah. So um, it's let's the same, go take it's a look the at same that. week as what the. So usually in week two or three, if I remember, I think it's, it's week three. It's week two for a calendar. Yeah. Um, so during week two of the update, so next week. If you're um, completing your calendar missions here, you will be oh, able to. Let me hide the the UI because it's yeah, it's like yeah. There um, you go. Um, so in week two, you need to make sure to do these missions, and then you'll get your doubloons. So yeah. instead of it being in your normal missions, it's in the calendar. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah. so usually like so. Th think of the calendar basically as an improved daily rewards. Usually with each week, there's a mission chain that can give you some rewards. The calendar, the missions are generally easier in the calendar than they are normally in the normal weekly challenges, and the rewards are often better. So it's easier challenges with better rewards when a calendar is active. Yep. Um, and if you do the challenges in week two, you get your doubloons. Yep. And if you do all the challenges on all the weeks, you get the commander, which is specialized for the Japanese cruisers. So it's improved daily missions with the opportunity for a big reward at the end if you do them all, which is pretty nice and cool. Um... So I mean, the when we were playing the mode in test and looking into it, it, it's it's a fun mode, but it gets very difficult very quickly once you get into the final like hard stages. Yep. Okay, so w w now things we have to show. We have Carl Johan, which is a a battleship that I still struggle to get my head around. Actually, it's a battleship with sixteen torpedoes. Uh, yeah, so eight yeah. per side. He has eight torpedoes per side, four launches that all have four tubes, and these are pan-European torpedoes. That means they travel like 90 knots, reload super quick, and have a really good range. Yeah, basically, think of Carl, Carl, Carl the Fourteenth Johan, um, which is a very inconvenient series of a series of words to use. Um, is think of it as basically <coughs> tier eight Brandenburg with like. Uh, Smalland torps, oh, yeah, yeah, Smalland torps. Yeah, yeah, basically, and you know, so sonic torpedoes, and <laughs> you know, it's just a really fat destroyer, kind of. Uh, <laughs> but think of it as like a, a, a bigger, better Brandenburg, um, and so it has some characteristics of Brandenburg and some character, um, some also unique characteristics. The guns are exactly the same. So if you're used to Brandenburg with uh, 1.8 sigma normal USN style dispersion, um. That's the same here with Carl Johan, um, but the secondaries have normal accuracy, just like Brandenburg, but they don't have one quarter eight shoe pin. So the secondaries have just completely normal pin, but good range. Um, and the um, so it's kind of the secondaries are more at, like like with Brandenburg, you can do a secondary build, but it's probably not advised. And um, they're more of a bonus than they are something you should build into. Can you share the torpedo sets real quick? Yeah. What, how fast are your torpedoes? Um, how far do by you? default, they're 86 knots. Ooh. 86 knots. 86 knots base. Speedy boys. With uh, how much range? Um, how much 10 range? Kilometers. Uh, 10 kilometers. Cool. Yeah. It's funny, dude. It's yeah, like... so think of it as a more torpedo focused Brandenburg that lost some of the second reload ability. 86 seconds so you yeah. can just spam basically 90 knot if you have a build you can basically spam 90 knot torpedoes all game and eight of them <laughs> per side yeah yeah it's yeah. it's basically torpedo Brandenburg <laughs> okay well we'll give it a go yeah they, we even gave it the area denial trait which is just above average number of available torpedo tubes <laughs> <laughs> uh, you turn you have the uh, cam camera overlay off oh uh, I mean, did you not have your deck as well? I don't have my deck set up now. Oh, well, so it's all you. <laughs> okay, sorry guys. If if the stream is going horrible with our, our camera point of view, it's absolutely my fault. Yeah. To be to be uh, fair, to be fair, normally I have or normally we're on we're in different chairs, so I, I put I put Connor in in the uh, in the camera chair this time. So actually, I'm I'm almost tempted to. Okay, we'll go with. 
I'm going to have a secondary mod, I believe. No. Yeah. So the Atlantico question, um, nothing has changed at the moment. We're still aware of the, uh, we're still aware of things in terms of the, the commander, but no news. So can't really answer the question. If you got the, if you got the, ultimately, if you got the ship out of a container, you don't receive the commander. There have been ships in the past where if you've gotten them, you haven't gotten the commander. There has been yeah, some. You got, um, the, can't off my head. There have yeah. been a, a few ships with commanders where if you got them from the container, you didn't get yeah. like the unique commander as well. Uh, yeah. Was it pan European destroyers? Um, it was probably well, uh, Bliskovica, um after the pan European destroyer release. But yeah, I'm not, sure. I'm not sure. Like so, you but know, there's a good example. Anyway. There was a bundle with Bliskovica with with uh, the commander, and if you got it yeah. in containers, you didn't get the commander. Among other things. <clears throat> but yeah, no, the situation hasn't changed. I'm actually going to take the uh, the secondary perk just because I think you can pump the secondaries up to like what? You can get 10 to like kilometers? 10 and a half, yeah, something like that. Which, you know, the secondaries are not like worth full specking into, but 10 kilometer secondaries are still quite useful. So even before I equip a commander, I've got them down to 7.8 kilometers. Yep. And then I guess I'll use Janko. No, I, yeah. Janko Vukovic, I think is how you say it, um, is our, our, our pan-European battleship commander at the moment. So um, he, uh, he has the unique trait, Reckless Gunman, which I'm going to be running, which is increase, it makes your uh, battleship reload time kind of kind of dumb, but it does make you more vulnerable to torpedoes. Um, okay, so the build I'm going to try is... Uh, wait, no. So I'm going to be running uh, Reckless Gunman with Porcupine. That should put me around the 10 kilometer range for my for my secondaries, which is like usable. Uh, firefighter with Master Mechanic, and I'll say running with scissors. And if my inspiration, so I'm going to use Andrew Cunningham and Ichino so for you're going to send it the shell grouping. So um, yeah, well, uh, considering Carl Johan is a better Brandenburg, Carl Johan is a tier eight, like twist on Brandenburg. I wouldn't say it's necessarily a better one. Um, will Brandenburg itself ever come back? Right now there's no plans for it, but I know there's a lot of people who really do want it, so we'll see. So, any news on the Borough Dino as of yet? No. No news. <laughs> the news is, is we it? have no news. <laughs> Where is it? Give me Borough Dino. Yeah, we don't have any information on this yet. It was in test. We gathered some data and... It will come when it comes. Will we have old commanders collaborations on mm. the, um, on store this update? No, those are they're not re returning this update. So uh, when that happens, it's usually going to happen around the uh, the August anniversary. Will the my soul be in the store in future updates? Nope. This is an exclusive five year veteran reward. Just how Cyclone is an exclusive four year veteran reward. Nope. You'll have to be with us for five years to get the ship. Siegfried return win, same answer as Brandenburg. <laughs> In general, you're going to find this answer to a lot of the web yep. questions. Yeah. Is Shelly a space commander? Shelly Beepley? Yeah, Shelly Beepley is a space yeah. commander. Yeah, because yeah. Shelly Beepley is from the original Stellar Clash. She came in the same wave as Fishy, right? Yeah. From, yeah. The, from the OG free for all Stellar Clash uh, mode, where where <laughs> where uh, <laughs> where can a betrayed Robin on stream? <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't part of wargaming when that was live. I remember grinding it as a player. Yeah, oh. yeah that was the beginning of 2020. The grind was tough for that mode. The yeah. mode was fun, but the grind was tough. <clears throat> okay. In my opinion, this is the best update since I started four years ago. Good work, guys. The last one I or the last one I can't say that for. Um, yeah, so. You're welcome. Um, yeah, this was a huge update. Um, this this time, um, I had the honor of um, of writing the patch notes for us. So it was like there was so much to keep track of and figure out what needs to be talked about that it was overwhelming. Um, but the uh, the yeah, in terms of like the last update, um, always keep in mind that uh, that developers are humans and they need a Christmas holiday too. So. Um, 
or at least some of them do. And the so usually there's going to be one update at the beginning of every year where it's going to be a little bit, little bit lighter than normal just because there's a little bit less work time to work on. Yeah, so and, some of so. The, the comments about last update were not kind, <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. But we hear you. We saw the feedback, kind or not kind. Um, generally, if an update is relatively quiet, it's usually because the team is focusing on something for a future update. The harsh reality of our situation is our game releases an update every five weeks, yep. which means we have five weeks to fit in development time for either the future update or any ones after that, along with testing, because everything in the game has to be tested and then integrated and then published and, 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 and so on. So it's a case of developing something and then testing it and if we have it in time free working on something for the future and so on it, 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 so we, sometimes we'll have a quieter update to free some availability and time to focus on something bigger and our players do regularly tell us oh we don't mind a quiet update if we can have some you know big quality of life features that we request and then we do that and sometimes people aren't too happy about it but this update as you can see hopefully has redeemed the quiet update last <laughs> month because there was uh, a lot of content in this, and it was rough to test. I'm sure our super testers would be happy to say. <laughs> as well as our internal testing teams and our quality assurance teams, it was a very, very big update this, this month. Yep. So. A lot coming. <clears throat> all new tech tree and all that sort of busy update. So what are your favorite things about this update? This Shimmer has 698 kills, by the way. <gasps> Be careful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what's my favorite thing about this update? Uh, I think mine is probably the fleet tags. Do I have to pick one thing? <laughs> well, I guess probably probably um, the um, map changes would probably be my favorite thing. Okay, the question so. is, can I dunk Schlieffen, funny Schlieffen, with fast boy torpedoes. Let's try it. Uh, that's a lot of dorps. I don't remember how far away that shimmer was. He hit my broadside, but my turtle back came in clutch. Very nice. Oh, I just made a really stupid mistake and put all my torpedoes into the island. Okay, well, never mind. That was a really stupid mistake. Yeah. That's what I get for not paying attention. Load AP, go for Schroeder. Yeah, you got more interesting gameplay right now, so. Yeah, but I just I completely just whiffed two salvos of tops into an. No, oh, don't worry, you got another two. Uh, assuming I can get on that side, but I think he's gonna. My secondaries are putting in work. Honestly, they just disabled his torpedoes. <laughs> Come on. This is a Schlieffen moment. That's one of the nice things about the uh, the the torpedo place from on. on Schroeder's nose. Um, no, you can't do do Schroeder's nose. I'll hold my shot then. Um, the uh, the torpedo placement on Carl Johan is um, kind of towards the rear of the ship and a little bit uh, hidden away, so it's really hard to hit them from the front. Um, so, which is pretty nice, it means they're a little bit more protected than normal. Uh, I got the sh I'm is holding my shot, but the Shimakazi's here as well. It is a Shima, and I have a feeling he knows about Reckless Gun Man. <laughs> I write about no. Yeah. Right in the, if in you the let the Schroeder box. pass, um, or if the Schroeder gets past you, I can hit him on the side. I'm getting chunked. I made a really, I made a huge mistake pushing this. It cost me a lot of health. Oh. These people hit the Shimmer. It is dangerous. Oh no, Gatorp's coming. Yeah, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I guess I'm being cross tops. I can't avoid it. I'm dead. So do it. I did horrendously. Oh, we'll only 50,000 damage. I need to pay attention to this game because I'm trying to read everything. Yep. If, you, if you have any questions or if you see any questions that yep. are. I'll handle. Uh, well, you can also send them my way as well. Just. Mm -hmm. So I pushed that, whiffed all my tops, and. Uh, oh, you, got you, got, and died. <laughs> you got the Schlieffen and the Schrader for it, so. Yeah. 
Reader. Shrink. The secondaries were putting in a surprising amount of work considering they're not like particularly uh, potent in comparison to some of the German battleships. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to be infinitely spotted, so might as well fire. Yeah. Because that Shema is just waiting to reload. Okay. Boss knows how to find tops. Yeah, I do. Unfortunately, I always get top. Although I, I I play significantly worse on stream than I do, normally. So that's my excuse. <laughs> Don't hate me. One qu Oh yeah, one question regarding submarine lobbies. I mean, we don't have submarines, so we don't have submarine lobbies. Yep. I don't like having a uh, gun duel at long range with a grosser curve first uh, when I have 305 mil guns. Will Takahashi get the same premium camo as the rest of the tech tree? Uh, you mean the fleet uh, review? The black and white and red and gold camouflage? Uh, maybe. I don't I think, think so. I don't, so. I don't think there's any plan for it. So? Yeah, no. I, don't, I, I don't recall. I, I don't think it does, actually. I don't remember testing it. I think it's just to the seven. When we add proper voiceovers to Pan Asian commanders, uh, like the the <laughs> guess the yeah. issue the issue with voiceovers for Pan Asian commanders um, in particular is that um, those or firstly those languages have changed a lot in the past eighty years, um, which means we have, need to find or some of them rather, have changed a lot in the past 80 years, so we would need to find the correct language for basically each commander, as well as um, there are the commanders represent a bunch of different nations, so I would say it'd be pretty unlikely to see them adjusted to be perfect. Hello guys, compliments for the new update. Wanted to ask if it will ever be possible to send a message in the game to a player using a different console. We don't have any plans to introduce no. cross-platform messaging, I'm afraid. No. I got lucky this morning, picked up the tier five new line in my first cruiser crate. Awesome. These crates also do come with a guarantee. Uh, they come over for a guarantee for the early access cruisers, so. Yeah. But there is also an opportunity to get Maya. Not yep. in the guarantee, but it is a potential drop. Which is a tier 6. Yep. With main battery reload booster. And really good AP penetration, actually. With a relatively good fire chance. It is overall quite a potent cruiser. Oh, there's another destroyer here? Oh, no. There's two shimmers? Ah! I don't want to be here. I would love to have more camo types in game, especially the variety PC has. We are working on it. There are still some ships we have to apply like base craftable camouflages to, but we are striving to try and make it so that new ships we release have a like free craftable camouflage for paint, Yo. as well as us offering like some some options for more like unique paid camouflages and things. Yo. More question. Sorry, Robin guys. Please, thanks. Unfortunately, I don't think any of us will be uh, having Commander guys is anytime soon. Yeah, I'm actually... I want to get this call, Johan. Um... You can you can pen his back nose. Yeah. I just gotta get my... I just gotta get my guns off. I mean... Yeah, first off, we get on it either way. I'm actually gonna turn. I'm actually gonna turn around and get out of here and see if we can. Wait a second. Boost the mm, I don't think I have a range. But come on, Colbert. Get him. Uh, the personal thingy for the five year celebration. What we are. So I actually got the five years. Um, not everyone in the community team has this. That has like the mysore. Is it mysore? Am I saying it right? Uh, mysore. Mysore. Oh, yeah. Uh, even internally, like within wargaming, these ships are quite deemed as like veterancy yeah. rewards. Like Robin doesn't have one because um, Robin um, switched from Xbox to PlayStation halfway through. Yeah, yeah. Um, he got the three year, I believe. Um, Orochi doesn't have it. Uh, I'm not sure if Sihales has it. I don't think so. Well, he he probably does. I have it because I was I was here since Alpha, um, and 
blip has been around as long as time itself. Because I think he has it. Yeah, you do. Oh, yeah, you? oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I started working on Legends on July 2nd, 2019. Cool. I can't yeah. even remember what my first task was. I think, I think my first task was first to evaluate some of the... Um, so at the time I was a copywriter, so my job was writing things. And, um, and my first task I think was to evaluate some of the naming conventions and, um, like, and text that we already had in the game and then see if anything that needed to be changed. And then like my immediate task after that was to write the press release for the uh, Turpets update, which was the release of the game, so. <laughs> my first task, let me think, what was my first task? I think I got two tasks simultaneously. One of them was to manage super tests, and the other one was to interact with the Reddit community, I believe. Like, day one, just thrown in the deep end. Right, you're now on Reddit. I think you also got the uh, Xbox Club day one, pretty much. Yeah, I also managed all the, the social media slash kind of posts you saw on the Xbox console itself. Um, and that was like my, my day one. Although I'm kind of jealous because a lot of people when they join the company now, their day one task is to play the game. <laughs> I got robbed of being paid <laughs> to play video games. Because you, we already knew you played the game. They robbed me! <laughs> Every time I see a new play, like a new employee join and his job is just to sit there and get paid to play the game for two weeks, eight <laughs> hours a day. I'm like, why couldn't it have been me? Damn it! <laughs> it should have been me! Because <laughs> I already played the game before I joined. So they were like, I we need to do that. Yeah. Oh, no. Yeah. So I just got work. Day one, work. Was it? Oh. I'm not sure which shimmer that was on. I was. It was the. Uh, it was Viva Vision. Okay. So, uh, congratulations, Viva Vision, on your 700th kill in shimmer. Oh, did he get? He got me with it as well. No, he didn't get me, but uh, he almost got me at 701. <laughs> that, means, that means I was almost at 700 kill. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and head back to port here. Do some cute or do do some chat time. Yeah, chat time. Um, for the American Battleship Tech Tree line, will you implement numbers on the front bow of the ship? Um, for example, Iowa has its own camo without the number sixty-one. Um, so, basically, no. Um, the reason that we don't have them on the Tech Tree ship line is essentially because these ships aren't always accurate representations of the specific shame ship that they're named for, and are rather like. The representative of the class of ship so if we have like new york for example it's kind of a hodgepodge between new york and texas and so um it's not strictly just new york and so iowa is a hodgepodge of like iowa and new jersey kind of together with a mixture of anti-aircraft um and so a lot of it so applying the bow number to and the like the, or and or the nameplate to these ships would kind of be a disservice in in, in a way um, so there, so most tech tree ships are not the specific ship that they're named after, but rather the class that they're named after. Hope that makes sense. Uh, can we get like a mark of excellence in World of Warships? I mean, we basically have something similar. We have active frag counter camouflages for some of our legendary two ships yep. in the forge, which live track the kills you've received in that ship on the whole. Yep. Um, what buffs has Cyclone got? Uh, so here, let me let me go over the Cyclone real quick. So Cyclone got the gigabuff of gigabuffs. So Cyclone now has a um, 6.5 seconds ba second base reload speed. Uh, I have a commander build here, so it, it's a, um, a, a bit shorter than that. Um, it also received um, its repair party was moved to slot four. So used to you had to swap smoke. Um, you either had smoke or heal. Um, now it is on slot four. The um, what was the other changes we did to it? Reload, right? Um, the, the torpedoes got buffed as well. The torpedo, I think, reload and the torpedo speed got buffed up. So, and that's the main buffs for Cyclone. But the giga buff to Cyclone is the main battery reload time went from 10 seconds down to six and a half. It's like a huge main battery buff. But I've actually got a question. I've actually got an answer for a when question. Hey! <laughs> Someone said, Graph speed on sale when? I've got my list here. I'm like, oh, oh. So actually, as part of the five-year update, when? between April 22nd to April 29th, you will have a 50% discount on Graph Speed. So that is week five of the update. Yep. 
So uh, I can find the answer I when question. <laughs> so other ships on sale if you're interested. So between March 25th to April 1st, you can get the incredible, mighty, amazing, ultimate Charles Hughes. And uh, Hood. <laughs> so yeah. these will be the first two ships. The mighty Hood. In um, the second week, you'll have Strasbourg and Abruzzi for sale, 50% off. Week three is West Virginia and Rochester. West Virginia. <laughs> let's, let's, let's start with that. <laughs> week four is uh, the aircraft carrier Zueho and Le Terrible. And week five is Orkin and Gref Speed. I, I have to fix week four. Week four is Zueho and oh, La Terrible. This guy, honestly. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> yeah, so we have loads of sales to get ships for 50% off. So if you want any of these, we'll have to wait. we're going to have to wait five more years for another answer to a win question. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you next year. <laughs> so let's see. Um, any plans to bring frag camos to tier seven and eight? Um, no plans at the moment, but it is it's a, it's a good idea. So yeah, I mean, if like, there's if there's need or want for them, but they're in the forge. Yeah, they they take like there's lots of things for steel right now. Yeah, like like um, camos take a little bit, um, take a little bit of time for us to make, and frag camos take more testing than usual because they have a, a changing element to them, so um, it's a little bit more difficult. Um, but um, yeah, I don't see like I don't see why not. It's just kind of legendary tiers are like the like kind of premier ships from the perspective of like like. Uh, it takes a it takes a, a good time investment to earn them, so um, they have them. What are the tier seven ships on sale? Off the top of my head, none of these are tier seven. Charles Hughes is six, Hood is six, Strasbourg is six. Yeah, most of these are tier six. The Bruzy, Virginia, yeah, except Virginia carrier five. carrier is five. Uh, Virginia is five. Grash Bay is it's five. Five, yeah. So uh, tier five and six. Yeah, and Rochester is tier seven. They all. Push up those glasses. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> so it's a wide mix. And, you know, it's a really big sale. It's a big discount. You know, if you want them, great. You, you've now got a big discount. If not, that's fine. I feel like none of them are hardcore you that you desperately need. I mean, Grafsby is technically, like, one of the meta ships for ranked and things, but... Nope. Yeah. Nope. <sighs> okay, so we have the Japanese cruises. We have Mysore, Cyclone... Uh, let's let's do my sorry. Dyson as well, which is a uh, long range torpedo battleship. Okay, my sorry. Sure. <clears throat> so what I'll do is I will crack us up a minute. I've got to set my ship up. So, like. What was your first update? You said your first update was turf hits. Um, so I uh, yeah I started working during the um, the Atlanta campaign update if I remember right, or the update after it, and then my but the first update that like I was preparing writing and stuff for was the Turpits release update. So, um, oh, I remember I remember the Turpits campaign. Oh, <laughs> the Turpits campaign oh, was really rough. It was so rough. I'm being silly. I can't find it. Oh, I'm looking at the wrong thing. Yeah. So, okay, what's well, the I'm actually to make a build. Yeah, so what's the know. coupon that you get for finishing the loyalty reward mission? Oh, God. You hit me with the one specific question that I'm just not prepared for. So, the loyalty rewards. The, they, the coupon connected to it. It doubles your rewards. No, no, no. The coupon. Oh, the sale coupon. Oh, depends what, what bundle. Like, which yeah. what year you received. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I don't know that so one. I can tell you for the five years. Hold on. I don't. I. I don't think it's, yeah, it's in the missions. Yeah, it's. It's. Yeah. Okay. So the missions. Well, <laughs> yeah, if you message us on Discord, we can get back to you with this one. It's. It. We've. There's a lot of content we've tried to prepare for for this stream, and you've caught us with the one thing we haven't prepared for. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. My sorry. So we're gonna go with. Uh, aiming systems mod, uh, would, uh, I guess I'll put on, like, one of the space flags, sure. Yeah, get a Kraken was a hard mission, yeah, it was get a Kraken and also get 150k damage, um, you had to get do both, 
if I remember right. And there was no catch up at that time. So like you had to do you had to get a Kraken within a week. Yeah, if you if you if we if we put a Kraken cat challenge in, there would be some riots. Oh dude, I so I Turpits actually made me just like I just bought the campaign out. <laughs> After like week three, I remember sitting in a party with Menacing Coyote. And <laughs> cool, I just remember perfect. having like a flat mental breakdown of one of the missions. <laughs> Like, and on the verge of just quitting, I'm just gonna buy it. Yeah. And I just well, bought it out. Plus a Confederate and high caliber. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, it was like, it was a AP only was... smoke cruiser. So, beyond range with Sultan from the Ghost, AP pen. Yeah. Fixated, fully packed. Yeah, we, we have come a long way since then. And, but like, maybe, maybe we should like put it as like an alternate objective for, for, it, for a week was, at some point. It was a Kraken, and then there was another ch uh, mission chain that couldn't stack. So you had to do one game at a time. And it was like, get 100k damage, get 125k damage, get 150k damage. Yeah. And this was back when there was really no ships in the game that had massive health pools. Yeah. So you, it was like, like you basically had to like get a Kraken to, uh, to achieve these, these damage numbers. Yeah. Oh. Like, and like get 15 citadels in a single game and oh <laughs> i remember just pulling out iwaki and clubbing to get the citadel <laughs> missions yeah well that like citadel missions haven't changed you, you like you, you you pull out iwaki you pull out um Akotnik is a fa favorite leander you works really well you can't pull out iwaki anymore because the the missions for the heroics are tier oh, four or tier up, five yeah. and up so Akotnik is now the way to go for that yeah <laughs> no, that's not what i wanted where is he? Here he is. Sure. Um, with future collabs, can we as a collective community have um, somewhat of an input? Um, so, mm. realistically speaking, no. Because um, to, to give you like an example, like some collabs, will, like we'll, like we'll, or not, not <clears throat> we, but like um, the like collab conversations can start literally years in advance. Um, and so usually it's about a year in advance. So like, so if we like, say we polled you and, you know, got, got, gave you a list of like potential collab partners. First off, those collab partners probably wouldn't like us polling you and asking if, um, about that. And se second off, then we have to then approach them after we have polled you hold them and then it's up to them whether or not they decide about that so and there's they, a whole bunch of even situations if they do decide there. it could be years yeah. until you see it is yeah so there's a whole like it's a whole kind of infeasibility thing there um so yeah like it's like it's a sounds like it's one of those kind of sounds great doesn't really work that well situations um Okay. It is two brothers, and we did do a middle spawn. Oh, I don't want to do the middle. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's not a good idea. <laughs> no, no, with this many battleships in the game. No, because yeah. they're just going to... Steamroll. Yeah. Fano snap. Look at the two wargaming devs throwing. <laughs> yeah. Um... You know, it's also just a case of our content shifts dramatically. We don't do polls in general because even if you say you want something and we start developing it, there could be a variety of issues that make us have to delay it or postpone it. Or cancel it. Uh, or... And people, it would ultimately be a case of you feel like we're not listening to you anyway. Like, uh, this is already happening. So has already happened. Training yeah, rooms. <laughs> no, I mean in general. Like, so there's a, a common conception that people say that wargaming always ignore feedback. They don't care. Wargaming only care about money. And a lot of this is due to the fact that a lot of the quality of life features you request or things you consider to be small changes that you want. Um, these begin development, or we have to squeeze them in when we can, and it can sometimes be like five, six months or even longer before we finally have a, an available window to squeeze these in. And by that point, you, because you guys don't realize what we're working on or what we're not working on, the way you see it is you've been asking for six months because you'll, you'll repeat the same feedback every week and we've been ignoring you for six months. But in true retrospect, we've actually had this on the schedule for six months to do it. 
so we haven't been ignoring you for six months. It's on the list of things we intend to do. So we already have this case of players feel like their feedback is being ignored. Even though every update, almost all of the quality of life changes we add are based on feedback. Yeah. But because there's such a, a varying time between when, when it's requested and when it's added, people often feel like either we've ignored them or we're adding it because you've been begging for it for months and months and months. When in retrospect, that's not actually the case or it's not always the case. So like every every like UI change or filter change or ability to open all containers or dismount all containers or craftable camos and things like that. These are all things that were on our schedule for a really long time, but we just had to find a window where we could commit to it, test it, make sure it works and get them in. Yeah. So or, the, or some features can also be just so huge and require such a massive uh, amount of work on it. Um, where it like in order to find a time slot that works you're basically just going to have to decide this person is going to work on this for a year and then that's their job then that's all they're going to do um, so like um, and th that like and that's a that's a big decision you have to decide I'm going to decide that this person is not going to be useful for okay. anything like urgent for yeah. a year so I'm already seeing some loaded questions coming in. So let's address them. Appear like so like so who requested the ribbon relocation? So okay, so no one requested the ribbon relocation, as you're probably aware in the way you're you're asking the question. But what was happening is we had some rare circumstances um, in testing environments where ribbons were falling so low on the screen that they were actually covering your acceleration or deacceleration UI element on the bottom of the screen. So we raised them slightly to accommodate for this as a fix. So even though you may not have necessarily encountered the issue, it will prevent you from encountering the issue in the future. Yep. So Which this is a bug fix. This was a preemptive bug fix for a bug that you didn't see yet, basically, um, because it, this bug was prevalent. It was particularly visible in the Halloween mode, but not the Halloween mode, the, the April Planet Clash. It was a bug that was particularly visible there so it, it, this is a case of us fixing a bug that you hadn't had the chance to encounter yet because the bug was detected internally and fixed before it became a thing. Yep. And when we were testing it for the, the Planet Clash event, it basically came to light that theoretically this is possible for standard and everything else as well. So rather than... I just got one shot. So rather spite, than... Um, <laughs> You've been betrayed. You've hey, been... I, the English are coming. <laughs> I got shot down the middle while I was uh, while I was reading the chat. I'm really struggling to play the game and answer all of these yeah, questions no, at the same okay. time. I'm sorry. So, like, we did basically realized that this could theoretically happen in standard and other modes as well as the Planet Clash, even though it's less likely. So rather than just fixing it in one mode, we fix it in everything because it's easier just to address the cause of the problem rather than, you know, tattle around it. So yes, it wasn't requested. It was just fixing a problem. <laughs> but there are plenty of requested features, even in this update, like like fleet tags, like looking for fleets because players wanted more ways to recruit and engage with fleets. So we developed a whole new system to support it or fleet tags that were added next to usernames or spawn reworks or an additional ship in the, the forge for steel, you know, like, or a new commander with new skills. So we added a whole new commander with a whole new legendary skill, you know, like, Almost all of our updates, to some degree, are very based on player feedback. Oh, I'm dead. Yeah, I, I deserve that. <laughs> so it is still a Fiji. But the unfortunate reality is these changes came in quite a while after they were requested, so people don't necessarily see that. Like you, you may request a feature, and then the very next update, it's quite a store-heavy update, and you think they've ignored my feedback and they're focused on things that make money because that's what you saw in the immediate next update, when really your feedback was heard and the feature was scheduled in for an available slot yeah. several months down the line. Yeah, we, we've nailed that on the head by now. Yeah. So, um, let's see. Blip, can you talk about Mysori? Sure, yes. Um, so Mysori, um, in, no, unfortunately, I, I, I have um, since got deathstruck, but uh, Mysori is um, essentially is our first Indian ship in the game as part of the Commonwealth Tech Tree. Um, basically, um, it is ba or it's a Fiji-class cruiser. In World War II, it was known as HMS Nigeria. And then um, in 1957, it was sold and commissioned, or sold to the to, to the then independent India, uh, which was still part of the Commonwealth um, and still is. 
Um, but um, the but it was then sold to, to India in 1957 and commissioned into the Indian Navy as INS um, Mysore, and then served in the India, Indian Navy for 28 years. So she was in service until 1985, um, and she, she had a bit of a reputation of running into things, specifically in running into British ships. Um, she ran into uh, HMS Hogue at some point, uh, as well as um, two other ships. So she ran into three ships during her career in collisions. Um, but um, her like her con contribution essentially was she formed like the core of the Indian Navy at whenever it got started, and um, and was largely like a training cruiser to get um, officers and cadets and sailors into um, ship shape and ready to go um, and essentially you can trace like a lot of the modern indian navy today which is a very potent and um uh, sizable maybe it's like the fourth or fifth largest navy on the planet now um and uh to basically you can trace that back to mysore in a, in a way it was one of the first two cruisers that they had yep it was quite a significant cruise then yep for a five-year award yep so do all the Japanese light cruisers have a 360-degree turret on the front? Um, not all of them. Uh, no. So I, I know the, the tier 7 and 8 do, don't they? Yeah, there's tier 7 and 8 do, and I think the... Um, if I remember right, I think one of the... Uh, maybe Gokase has, has one, I think, but I'm not sure. So... Do... Okay. Do, do. Oh, we have uh, okay. So additional things. I'm trying to think of everything we can go through. We have the steel ship we can show. Uh, in no, the let's forge. show the Japanese uh, light cruisers. Do you so. want to show Japanese light cruisers? Mm. Which one? Um, so with tier seven. So these are torpedo heavy cruisers with a unique commander. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so is Shimanto. Okay. I guess I'll actually try and play a game of focus instead of getting one shot and throwing the game for my team. Yeah. So, um... What tier? Tier 7. So, Blip wears the Poland to Navy Tech Tree and Pan um, European Cruisers. Um, so there is no Poland to Navy Tech Tree. Um, there's just a few Polish ships in Pan European. So, uh, not sure exactly what you mean there. Um, the Poland to Navy isn't exactly known for having cruisers. So, not sure what you mean there. Why are the Japanese light cruisers, high explosive cells, so anemic? So essentially, so let me go through go through some history here. So um, uh, it's on the screen, okay? So the Japanese light cruisers, um, Agano, starting with Agano, are, um, are are are, inter are interesting si situations. Agano is actually technically the most modern um, light cruiser in the Japanese Navy during World War II. Doesn't look like it, and technically isn't it. Um, the guns off of the Agano class, or Agano and um, Gokase, are actually the secondary guns off of the Congo class battleships and the Fuso class battleships. These are basically World War One era, 152 millimeter guns from England. <laughs> the well, they're probably some of the or some of them were reproduced in Japan, but. Um, so these are World War One era guns, in, in, in a sense, for Agano and Gokase. So they're not really um, World War II standards, if that makes sense. So And neither would the shells be. And then with Shimanto, you have the um, Mogami 155 mil guns. Actually, no, not Shimanto, sorry, Omono. You have the Mogami 155 mil guns. These are the same as basically all of the, the uh, 155 mil uh, cruiser guns. And then with, starting with Shimanto and with Takahashi, these are specifically guns that were designed by the um, Japanese army as anti-aircraft guns. So they're not designed for uh, shooting at uh, heavily armored targets. They're designed at shooting at airplanes, which are not exactly known for being heavily armored. So that, that's that's our core I like that camo. Yeah, I do too. I'm going to show the camo real quick. Yeah. The camos for these uh, Japanese cruisers are beautiful. They have... Uh, this really nice white, gold, and red 
Yeah. Your Hagi is the same guns too? Yes. On a sleek design. And then you can see the, the Japanese red dot in the middle below the superstructure. And the plane. Yeah, everything about it. Is, like, these are probably some of these my are, yeah, they're very slick camos. favorite camouflages in the game right now, bar none, I think. Um, one of the Azalane camouflages looks really similar, which is was all which before this was always my favorite camouflage in the game. But the, I think these are now my favorite. Yeah. They're beautiful. Yeah. So, okay. Well, I mean, do you want to to jump us in and cue us? Uh, yeah, one one second here, <laughs> and we'll prepare for that. Um, so, <laughs> actually, show or show my screen real quick. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Omono, the um, the unique permanent camo is the Shamo camo. Um, it, the, we have the Fleet Week here um, as as the camo here. Then, if you're meeting the standard camo, is Shadow camo. So, I'm actually not quite sure why it is. The it could be possible that this is just a really dark version of like Sasebo Gray, but um, I'm not sure if it's the same as Shadow Camo. It, well, it looks like it is. So that is a bug report that I'll have to make. <laughs> Thank you for pointing it out. So let's uh, get ready for Q. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, I think the the fleet. Uh, interesting name, Fleet Review. I wonder if that's like a parade camo term. It is. Yeah. So it's essentially we 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 were trying to come up with the names for the for the for the camo for the camo, and essentially we're looking at it and it's like, well, this kind of looks like a like like a Fleet Review celebratory camo. So that's what we came up with. So um, Dyson secondaries, and why does she get better at EST than others? Uh, it's kind of one of the unique selling points of Dyson. Uh, we wanted to spice her up a little bit. So we gave her the best, the best EST in the game. She also has, um, if not the best, one of the best battleship um, engine boosts in the game. Um, just to kind of make her a little bit more interesting. She, fr um, coming from PC, she had improved secondary accuracy. So we wanted to enhance that a little bit more with the Legends Flare. But you probably shouldn't build her as a secondary ship because her armor is not suited for that. They're more of a self-defense item. Because she has a massive turning circle, so oh, yeah, yeah so, that's huge. So if you're playing, if you're playing, uh, playing or fighting against a Dyson, know that it does not turn very well, and so the secondaries and having an EST like that helps it defend itself whenever uh, destroyers come knocking. I'm just gonna go ahead and drop some torpedoes down yeah, this alleyway. Yeah, I'm, well. I'm doing the exact same thing. <laughs> <laughs> might as well. The torpedo <laughs> range is a little wiggle long. torpedo. Yeah, they do a little wiggle as they're going out. No, I'm gonna go oh, never for mind, Delta. I destroy just eight, three of them. Can we please see the new steel ship? Yeah, we will play Dyson. Um, Camp Bombers will play very well, though. Dyson have any special dispersion? Dyson's dispersion is um, is standard Japanese um, battleship dispersion, so it gets like it's competitively better over long range compared to other um, dispersion types, uh, but not so great at close range. Um, Dyson's um, Sigma or shell grouping is 2.0, which is amazing for a battleship. So, her AP shells are also monstrously powerful in terms of penetration. Oh, the carrier's going for me, but luckily my AA is really strong because we use throwing a lot of planes to do it. Yeah. Um, also, side note with Shimanto and um, with the with the tier eight ship as well. Um, starting with Shimanto, you get thirty millimeters of HE pin, which means that um, the, oh, which so means that she's, they can they can pin a lot of targets. They can't pin battleship um, plating armor, but they can pin basically any cruiser you come across. So these cruisers have really good AA and height. As you saw, like that that carrier couldn't get a drop on me. And the number of guns this thing has is uh, a lot, a lot of shells. If I can land them, it's turning all away. Okay. It's a different flavor of Susia. Yeah. Tor torpedo flavored Susia. <laughs> so you have these like just insanely long range torpedoes, really, really potent AA. Um, are the guns Azumo levels of pen um, on Dyson? Uh, so I'm not sure if there are Zumo levels of pin, uh, cause I can't remember you off missed. the top hand, but it is, really? it's better than Iowa pin. So that gives you, if hopefully that gives you some the, perspective. Almost the whole team is like trailing hard your side. Okay. That's not fun. Oh, 
get myself out of this situation Dude, if I can. Look at this turret traverse. It's Ooh. Yeah, it's a for a cruiser, buddy. These are like for a Japanese cruiser as well. Dude, there are destroyers with slower <laughs> turret traverse. Very good, very nice. Very good, very nice. Oh, can I get this Bismarck again? Can I get the firing angle I need? No, it's just out of my range. I feel like I need to spec into range a bit more with the build. It would be nice. A bit of additional uh, main battery range would go a long way here right now. Yep. B and C turret, nicely uh, do a 360. I think I can safely push up. I don't think anything really except the DD is going to be spying me. Uh, what are the other ships that are being discounted? Um, we, we read off the list earlier. Um, so this week we have uh, Hood and Charles Hughes, if I remember right. Um, yeah. And then next week. week is Strasbourg and something else. Um, so This Bismarck gun's facing me? No. We'll have Grash Bay at some point, West Virginia, um, Rochester, I think. And we carry her once we... This, this lightning is kiting really well. I'm just, I'm just having a really hard time getting it. I'm having a hard time hitting these shots for some reason. Bismarck is shooting me. He's turning in. The rotor ain't bad this thing either, to be honest. I am going to hit an island. If I don't uh, turn quick enough. Please. I need to go dark. Oh, I won't because the cruiser's going to spot me now. I made a really bad error. I shouldn't have pushed this. Wait, I did. Enemy carrier, is that a Shokaku or a Kaga? I was elected to be a That's right, both. Let's go broadside. I've got loads of guns. There may be light guns, but what I got loads. Spot? Oh, the destroyer spotting me. Yeah, I'm having a hard time as well. Uh, Schroeder. Okay. Okay, smoking. Good. That means I can go dark. Thank God. Please. There we go. I'm just going to have to run away. I don't get a penalty now. Well, I'm the only team member on the side of the map. There's that destroyer. Come on, go broadside Belfast. Do it. No, okay. I'm just not going to fire because I'm, I'm just going to get out of here. Our yeah, we, we've dead. secured this side, so we'll, we'll, get, we'll be coming around now. Yeah, our carrier is dead. If I fire now, I'm just dead, so. All right, let's withdraw then. Oh, yeah. <coughs> I guess our carrier. Yeah, if only Azumo's middle turrets was 360 degrees, Keck. Um, so, like, to create a 360, like, so... Historically speaking, creating a 360 degree turret mechanism is uh, quite complicated um, and um, requires kind of some specific development, essentially. Um, so for doing it on a cruiser scale is doable. Doing it on a, uh, on a destroyer scale is relatively speaking easy because it's like it's a smaller scale and whenever you're talking about larger and larger guns you run into the square crew cube law which is just no, nobody's friend um, basically the larger something becomes uh, in terms of volume the much heavier it gets and the so making a Izumo style gun 360 doesn't make sense from an engineering standpoint because it just be a waste of weight for what real like historically speaking in terms of like what a real life battle would be like is not a useful feature i'm trying to use this mountain to avoid the aircraft spying me I'm trying oh. to break the spying line all of our team are going really wide left round to b and yeah i'm dead so. i don't i don't think that's a good move because no, it's not. i'm trying to hold the middle to get some shots off on something in a minute but it's like if the carrier keeps spying me i'm going to have a bad time for the battleship no, like, like. 
I'm dead because there, there's a Z23 spotting me and I have no no choice but to uh, but to take shells and run. <clears throat> I can I can turn around and try to try to rush the the Z23, but then I'm just fucked. So <laughs> sorry for the language. That's all good. I our team's going wide left around the sand and I don't want to join them because it's just <laughs> going to put me out of position for everything. Yeah, but if, but if you don't join them, you become me next. Yeah, so. I'm about to be you now. Yeah. Please Rudder, turn quickly before the battleships punish me. Okay. Yeah, I just have to try and try to kill the Shimanto. Yeah, I'm putting shots upon him now. No, I'm dead. I mean, I've been saying I'm dead for a long time, but I'm burning out now. So. The St. Louis as well. Yeah, San Luis buff was huge. Huge. Yeah. So, uh, I'm just gonna get focused here down. Yeah. I should have probably put the dispersion module on this. I don't know why I didn't. I got a torpedo hit on something. I don't know what I hit. Uh, I got, oh, I hit the San Luis. Nice. So, uh, I'll look at. Um, I'm, uh, yeah, no. I'm just being I didn't had no 360 battleship turrets. We could talk about this. So I'm just meaning. Okay, yeah. Well, like, I'm not saying that they had no 360 degree battleship turrets. It's just, like, um, doing a 360 degree battleship turret, A, doesn't make sense, and uh, B, like, is, n like, it requires a lot of engineering to do it. So. And lots of battleship shells. In real life. That is. No, oh, good. But it, it is a game, so technically it's really getting hits. Come on, can all the guys on the left please get a crossfire going? If you're all over there, shoot the guy, please. <sighs> okay, he's... I'm just fighting away and doing my best to stay alive. Slow down. Turn away. Nope. Oh, okay, yeah, there he is. They're still Japanese cruisers, so they don't like being shot at very much, if, yeah, you, if you can help it. Oh, well, what can you do? Like, I just, our whole team just wanted to go cap B. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the whole team went P90 rush for you, and... Uh, I tried I didn't, to hold I didn't the middle because that's how you get in sh chase. So I thought, well, if I hold the middle, I can crossfire the battleships as they're pushing you. But nope. the safe option would have been to follow them. But I, I don't know why Why I would do that because then they can all just nose in there and it's like, well, <laughs> what's the point? Yep. The, the, the play there would have been join the team and P90 rush B. But, uh -huh. um, but I didn't get the memo. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate. All right. Okay, I'm trying to read the question. Seems like the AP is horrendous. It's a light cruiser. Yeah, it's still a 150 millimeter gun. So, like, yeah. If you get point blank something, like if a cruiser suddenly goes broadside to you five kilometers away, you can wreck some damage. But it's not a heavy cruiser. Yeah. If you want a heavy cruiser, like, play Azuma or something yeah. like that. It'd be it'd be like using the AP in, I don't know, uh, Cleveland. Like it'll work, but it's not something that you're going out there to to do with these ships. If that makes sense. Just bought Murmansk. Give me a tip. Uh, uh, don't get shot. Yeah, don't get shot <laughs> and use the HE. It is an Omaha still, but the like Murmansk is like Murmansk is the best Omaha. So Omaha's have it like, also Murmansk also has like really good AP. So it's kind of a sleeper. It's thinking. arguably like some of the best DPM in the tier. Like, you have really, really fast rate of fire, I think potent shells. I think it's the best AP DPM, at least for a cruiser. At the it's tier. also a really good HE DPM, yeah, too, so. with relative okay fire chance. So, abuse islands and just really annoy battleships. Yep. If you're going to play Dyson, I'm going to play Johan. I'm going to play, play the long boy. Get us ready, ready for a I mean, the, so, hang on. Would it be cool, though, for Azumo since one lowest DPM touch tree? I want to see my Azumo just close dust. Uh, I'm trying to ask on the question. Three, You want 360 angle on the rear turret? Yeah, yeah. It was, it's an ongoing conversation. So. Okay. Sorry, yeah. 
I'm all over the place. I'm sorry, guys. It's, it's, okay. been, it's been such a long day for me. Yeah, today has been today oh has been God. one of the days of all time for us. So we're just taking it easy and de-stressing. I'm not as, uh, cheerful and energetic on stream oh, as I, I usually oh, am. Oh, right I, I think I think you are. You're fine. Am I? You're <laughs> not. You're not molding about shimmers. So uh, just oh, it's been. I'm so tired today. Speaking of shimmers. Oh, what? There's one. Okay, that's fine. I was about to say, dude, if it's gonna hit me, like all three aside. Here you go, so. What happens to the XP earned in Planet Clash? It gets transferred to one of your tier ones. Yeah, to, to the uh, tier one American cruiser Albany. Yeah. Well, and, and so it'll become more or less elite experience for you. What's the mystery ship? The mystery ship is uh, Mikoyan. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, Mikoyan, it's a tier four. Oh, sure does. Yeah, okay. Um, it's all right. <laughs> the long boy. It is long. The camo so, is, I don't know if I like the camo one or not. I love the this is a This is actually a historical camo based off of, uh, I think Congo had this in like 1915, 1914. Um, it's, so it's a, it's a camo, there's like one picture of Congo wearing this camo and it's, like, ah, uh, I, I love that we recreated it. Oh, I made a um, mistake. I've realized I've just, I've realized I've sailed left, but I spawned right, right supportive side. Yep. I've sailed left, so I'm gonna quickly try and correct that mistake. Yeah, I'm just gonna kind of, kind of snipe a little bit. So, uh, is there a chance that we'll get additional GXP shifts? There's always a chance. Can't say anything more than that. Um, oh, man, I made a really bad mistake in position in a horrendous place. I can't love the island, I don't think. I would have been able to move really good, but they weren't really. Ohio, Is that Ohio? Oh, dear. It's, okay. a, it's a reverse side-scraping uh, Ohio. I just lost half my health to something on left flank. I positioned really badly. I should have sailed right and supported C. I don't know why I turned left. It's a silly, silly thing for me to do. AK on the Ohio. Honestly, I'm just not with it today. I'm not playing well. I mean, that's okay. Whatever. It's one of those days. So, if you have the picture of that Congo camo, can you drop it in the history channel on the Discord? Um. <laughs> maybe, t maybe tomorrow. <laughs> no, tomorrow I'm going to be flying, so I'm not going to be available for like the next two weeks. So. Um, what picture are you referring to about the Congo camel? It's like it's a really quite rare picture. Um, I think I have it somewhere, but uh, yeah, I have no idea. That's so, uh, and I'm like I'm flying tomorrow. I'm going to be too busy today um, to look to look for it. So, um, but if you remember and ask me for it um, in on in two weeks, or or if you just ping me and uh, and hope, I uh, might oh, like, no, get time to find it. Facing this way, oh. Right. I just got spotted by something while Ohio was on my broadside. Okay, he missed. Yeah. Ohio uh, was looking at you, so. I'm actually going to reposition the left side and see if I can push through here and then. It was summer spying me. Okay, well, torpedoes are probably coming. Oh, Ohio's turning. Oh, I was firing at me. Yeah, so what is Dyson? Dyson is based off of um, Battlecruiser 3, essentially. Well, technically it's Battleship 3, but it is a Battlecruiser. Um, so in the uh, uh, mid-1910s, um, Yuzuru Hiraga, who is basically the battleship designer for the Japanese Navy, um, drew up some sketches for kind of a Super Congo, essentially. And um, and Dyson is one of, if not the most impressive version of that, where um, you take um, eight 16-inch guns instead of Congo's 14s, and you make it go 35 knots, um, which at the time required you to have 215,000 horsepower, which is just a little bit more than an Iowa-class battleship. And uh, at the time, the in order to do that with pr the propeller technology they had, you needed six <coughs> propeller shafts. So Dyson has six propellers, which is the most on any ship in the game, which is just an interesting fun fact. Um, but none of these ships were built. Um, 
It's because the, essentially the specifications for it are extreme for the 1910s. Oh, right. Let's see. Oh, Shimakazi on far right flank. Is that the frag camo? No. Die so we can see the propellers, Lomo. Okay. <laughs> I will oh, try, yes. oh, I will yes, try not that, to please you. Oh, yes, of course. That's the reason you're dying. <laughs> yeah, Ohio wants me. I don't know what hit me at the start. Something from the, from basically concealment just thunderclapped me a minute into the game took half my health. I don't think I can actually make it out of here and come back. I think I can. I've just got uh, basically an uncontested shimmer on the right flank right now. Just oh no, I'm trading out to an Oh, uh, Please don't take a shimmer top. Come on. Oh, that's a Yamato. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna make it. Come on, get him. Yes, there we go. Right. Oh, I don't think I have turning room. I don't think I have turning room. Nope. Dyson has like a, a 1100 or 1050 meter turning circle, something like that. I don't it's know how to push huge. this, dude. I, I There's literally just so many ships like behind the smoke screen. Yeah, I don't have a spot over, anymore. Over, over there, it's just hold, essentially. Well, maybe, I don't know. Uh, you don't have the Ohio over there anymore. So it's just the Palmer and whatever that else. That Yamato is chilling. Okay. Yamato's looking at me now. Um, I dealt with the Shimmer. Thank God. One less problem. I think this Yamato's going to turn in nose towards B. Uh, all right. I'm going <clears> to... <throat> I'm heading your way. <sighs> question is, can I hit and run this Yamato? Go. Trying to get to people's broadsides, but they're not letting me. I'm trying to hit so. and run Yamato. No, all oh, Ricochet is off his cheek. Oh, and he's going to reload and smack me because he's looking at me now. Come on, accelerate. Go, 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 go. Hit and run, hit no, and run. No, there's a destroyer behind no, me now. Oh, no. He whiffed. <clears throat> all right, my new plan is going to be sell to B and go around. I, I seem to get a crossfire and. On some of the stuff in here, yeah. Because. Yeah, if you could, if you, if we can double team this Palmer, and... out of range, but he's only barely out of range. Can I just like completely surprise this Alaska? Just catch and lacking. Okay. I'm undetected now, so I'm gonna. No, he's still coming this way. So he's just gonna detect me again in a minute. I reckon, I don't think this Alaska knows I'm here. I think I'm going to come, just completely catch him off guard coming around here. No, he's looking at you. Oh, is he? Yep. Okay. Dyson is just not cooperating for me today. Oh, Alaska, Jesus. Ten seconds reload, hang on. Uh, if I get my torpedoes off, I might trade with Alaska, but let's see, because I don't want to run it. My entire battle has just been getting railed from the side every time yep. I tur turn anywhere, so. You got him. Nice. Uh, great cost, though, because I know I'm going to burn to death. 
Okay, can I break check this Yamato? Here's the test, boys. Um, burning to death. I'm, I'm down. That's it. Stress levels are ninety-nine percent. Uh, uh, giving me only pins. The oh, high has got me. Of course. Oh, it's better than burning to death. Oh, that fire got me. Yep. This has been dodged the legendary salvo. <laughs> yeah, <it was> the <laughs> Big same. match. I just, I, I think it was at the Yamato at the start of the game that hit me really, really hard. And then took half my health right off the gate, so I was playing defensively for the rest of the game. Managed to get two kills, but I could have played much more aggressively if I had the health to push. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just getting gonna get triple teamed by these battleships. Hey, Conqueror, can you can can you help? Is the Dyson better than the Iwami? Well, they're kind of different play styles, really. Yeah. Dyson is more accurate than Iwami. Um, Iwami is much more durable. <laughs> Cannot get away. <laughs> Nothing I can do here. Except to run. Right, there's just three of us, so... Unfortunate. Unfortunate. You do get eight torpedoes on each side. Um, they are, I think, they're 10-kilometer torpedoes. They're good damage, too. The Japanese torpedoes that do substantial damage if they hit. Oh, there's Yamato yeah, got you brought, so, uh, yeah. good night. As you good go. night, girl. We'll catch you next time. Yeah, that's it. Ah... Uh, I literally got like nothing just, but pins the whole time. Just Yama two Yamatos in Ohio just I hit that vibe Yama checking. I it. hit the side of that Yamato like three times and just pins, pins, like, pins. <laughs> just hitting the wrong spots. I got vibe checked a minute into the game, and then after that I was just trying to dodge the Ohio. <clears throat> yeah. The guns feel really good to shoot, but I like I feel like Games trolling me super so hard. I believe Dyson has the best speed boost. It's a 12% speed boost, which is the best or next to best. Um, Especially or, for Battleship. Or tied for best for Battleship, yeah. And then it also has like the most accurate. Yeah, it has it has the secondary. best DSD, yeah. Yeah. In terms of like accuracy improving, there's a whole argument to be made about <clears throat> secondary accuracy and how much is too accurate, but um, it has the, the strongest DST. Let's put it like this. So. It's not necessarily like a. The thing about it is, it's, it's a. It's not necessarily like a meta-defining ship, which I think is fine. Yeah, it's a unique but ship. But it's, it's it, it has unique things to it, which is why I think the forge should be. Yep. Like you shouldn't have a game-breakingly amazing ship that you win if you have if you're willing to spend so much steel. But it's an alternate nice unique reward for someone who wants to have like a cool tier 8 for their steel yep. uh, ESC equals fun rating uh, I think we're talking about EST so EST is your enhanced secondary targeting consumable so that's your um, that's this consumable here um, yep. so everybody or not everybody but we call it EST because it's a lot easier to say that so um, okay, right. Well, we have time for probably one more battle. Really? No. No. Oh, wow. It is 640. Yeah. Like, Damn. Okay. We've barely... We've barely... Scratched the anything. surface, yeah. Yeah, we still have three more we did, or four more. We did Masori. We did Carl Johan. We did Dyson. We still have the Japanese so cruisers. Either, either... Cyclone. Japanese cruiser or Mikoyan. Or Cyclone. Uh, do, we, do I even have a Koyan? Well, you, you, Cyclone. You should have Cyclone. We played you. Cyclone last year. But it's, it's like literally twice as good now. <laughs> it's, that's true. It's a whole new ship at this point. Well, if, hang on. I don't have I don't have Mikoyan. So. Oh well. Yeah, we don't because we haven't done Circle Five yet. Okay. So. so yeah, Cyclone. Yeah, we have Cyclone. All the other Japanese cruisers. I guess we'll play Cyclone. Why not? It's just a witty little destroyer. Plus all of you can stream snipers, because I will we'll keep the queue visible. It's a tier four game, so if you want to come stream snipers, I guess go ahead. 
Uh, destroyer, premium, cyclone. Shouldn't it say enhanced anti torpedo about armament booster? Okay, so <laughs> about this. So you might notice that we haven't used that terminology in like a year. A to B A <laughs> is just the abbreviation that we use in our game files. Yeah. Like, so, when, when we look at internal documentation or like game code, it's ATBA. Yeah. So like if I like if I'm looking for the secondary accuracy of a ship, I'm going to go to that ship's file. I'm going to hit Control F for find. Um, the, the basically the find feature on on a control on a computer, and I'm going to sort of type ATBA, and that'll take me immediately to it. Yeah. Um, HE shell damage. I'm not even sure that's really like late three. It, it does stand for anti torpedo boat armament. It's a, like a really old term from like World War One um, that some navies and uh, and uh, historians still use because that's the original purpose for it. So you might sometimes see our devs like we yeah. we try to not refer to it in player facing like communications, but our devs were yeah. not communicating. Well, we before. we we tried it for a couple updates last year and then gave up on it. So yeah, because it just wasn't um, sticking. Yeah. Players um, had a lot of feedback that was like, oh, well, SB or the abbreviations make more sense, and yeah. they do. Yeah. It's just like a lot of our development technical phrases don't make sense. <laughs> yeah. But that's just the way it is. Yep. So like these are the the, the terminologies yep. our devs use when communicating with each other. Yeah. Uh, why can't my secondaries target incoming torpedoes? Because they're not anti-torpedo armament. They're anti-torpedo boat armament, which means a boat that is carrying torpedoes. Usually those boats are ship scale. What was this? Like a fort? Don't tell me about that one guy in time with the guy with the Lee Enfield. I know. <laughs> there was one time. There's a reason there's one time. <laughs> There is a, there there isn't a case where one guy on a ship with a Lee Enfield rifle shot a torpedo and it blew up. Uh, there's a reason there's one time. <laughs> Did you receive accommodation for that or some kind of award? Uh, Interesting. Yeah. I think so that would that one guy that one time is the survi survivor bias of this instant of the whole <laughs> thing. Um, do you need the Yamato for the Yamato event coming? Um I can't remember the details of it. It's just a mission chain, essentially. Anti Godzilla minus mm. one guns. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> one time is enough to make it into the history book. Two times is enough to be interesting. What's the term for mixed primary artillery? Um, so you have uh, oh, mixed primary. So you, so in that case, your biggest gun is primary is your primary. Your second biggest gun is your secondary. Your third biggest gun is your tertiary. Your fourth is a quaternary. Your fifth is the quintenary. And if you have more than that, you're French. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Because <laughs> they were the only ones crazy enough to do it. <laughs> There are no subs in Legends. Have they? Uh, have we had, we've got aircraft carriers. <laughs> that Lee Infield guy is also the anti-air gunner on Oleg. Oh, oh, hang on, Lady Nicholas, on me. Oh, turning. He's gonna try and smoke and slow down. I don't want to smoke here. I feel like it's just way too much to smoke right now. Oh, I'm being shot with the things though. Can I go dark without smoking? I can. Oh, carry it. Oh, did I say Lindsay's tops? Am I stupid? I'm being cross topped already? Oh, by the carrier as well. Oh, cool. Sag. Oh, oh crap, there's somebody behind me. Oh, it's T22. That's a 2 I'm dead. I literally just got cross topped like <laughs> by, by the carry DD combo. Ah! I am not a destroyer player. I should make this clear. <laughs> I should make this clear now before this goes horribly wrong. Oh no! Are we gonna be the first two people dead in the game? I think we are. Yep. Crazy. We'll play another game. 
I just I got sir off. <laughs> can, <laughs> can I get the C22 before it? Uh, what the? Oh, he already launched his corpse, so. The beach will protect me, honestly. The beach is my friend. I'm undetected now. Uh, Save me! I am still alive. Let's how, go. How are you? <laughs> Let's go. Going for like the inevitable blind drop just to hit you. What carrier is it? Serov. Okay. Yeah, so because he, he just like I was dodging torpedoes from the destroyer, and the Serov saw a perfect opportunity to catch me while I was sailing in a straight line to dodge yeah. the torpedoes to hit me with like all five perfectly aligned. That was it. I had no choice but uh, to take one. Very this man of culture. And it's actually a good, a good potent battleship. Yeah, it's like a, it's a solid tier four. It's like Cesar is meta, but oh, well, Cesar is absolutely meta. But Unitas like, is like second or third good, I think. It's it's got a lot of relatively accurate good pen guns. Yeah. The only problem with Viribus Unitas is that it's not Julio Cesari. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. <laughs> if we didn't have Cesar in the game, I think that would be the best or one of the best. Yeah. But Cesar is. Too good, and it's often on sale in the store. So you often, like, you could often get Cesar discounted, and it's arguably the best tier four. No, I, I got hitboxed. My torpedoes. Happened to me in uh, the first game. I hit the the coast of the island. Yeah. Oh, is Munchin coming this time? Okay, so I'll list. Uh, Munchin all, is not. All the ships coming on discount over the course of the next five weeks. So 50% off two premium ships every week. Week one is Charles Hughes and Hood. Week two is Strasbourg and Abruzzi. Week three is West Virginia and Rochester. Week four is, I'm gonna say it wrong and Lane's gonna correct me again. Zuiho, Zuiho? Zuiho. Zuiho? Yeah. So they carry Zuiho uh, with La Terrible. And tier five is Orkin and Graf Spee. Spee. What is the Achilles in the store? It is a slightly balanced reworked Oland with a cool skin. Yeah. So I wouldn't call it balanced rework. It's just a different like it's a different take on Oland. Thanks um, again for the Hughes buff final. So it got buffed, but it's not really <laughs> <laughs> anything special, is it? It's just like the the ship is arguably put not particularly strong. So it has the best DFA in the game for reasons i don't know times four dfaa so it has really cracked like freezing level aa for a minute Ooh. ishmael ishmael what what i just watched that, that was cruel <laughs> oh agano your soul is mine That was disgusting. <laughs> Hughes is uh, a funny, a funny ship. Yep. Get, the ship. get it on sale right now. Ironically, the sale for Charles Hughes ends on April 1st. So uh, if you want a meme ship, get it before April 1st. And no, I'm not joking. On the space event, do the fresh spawned enemy ships usually spawn on top of you, causing you to spontaneously explode? Um, that so, the that number of instances where this has occurred is not zero, but it's also not significant. Basically, the the spawns are relatively predetermined, like they'll always spawn there. And if you just happen to be there when they spawn, that's unfortunate. Spilling the secret sauce. <laughs> but yeah. They'll, the, when they get in the higher circles, we'll see anyway. Like, yeah. so It's essentially, uh, think of it as like, um, uh, how, how, how to say it? Um, the... Um, if you're pushing too hard too fast, you, it, it is more likely to happen. Yeah. So, um, so it's a it's a it's a pacing limitation. You have to you have to pace yourself correctly, and um, to make it through, with to avoid that. And so, if you're going way too fast and going too pushing too far too fast, that is much more likely to happen, and you'll the, have a bad time. For the most part, the minions will spawn not really far away, but a little bit further away, and then they sail towards you. But 
if your if your battleship is like way back there and you're just Tyler one mm, beelining it for the boss as quickly as you can when the when the rest of your team reach the point to spawn the next set or they kill enough minions to spawn the next set or they do whatever they need to do to trigger the next phase you're going to be in the next phase area as it happens yep so uh i guess the number isn't zero we actually had one instance in test where a ship spawned and landed on top of a tester inflicting <laughs> ram damage <laughs> basically it just it's wild just spawned on him and they rammed each other but there's only one case of that in test and i imagine there'll be more cases in live and in, in the full game but yeah. it's a close quarters fun base mode and if you're in a spawn zone you probably shouldn't be there because even if you do survive and they don't spawn on you you're going to be guaranteed to be within the detection range and surrounded and they're, and, surrounded, yeah. and they're all just going to phase you because you've got no team to support you so yep. oh man <laughs> it happened to me a lot in testing i would push too far ahead and then just get completely phased by all of them because they would just spot me and insta kill me if you're a dd and you get spied in this mode because of the way the ai target they're all just going to hammer you and kill yep. you yeah so the, the yeah the um yeah, so we'll, we'll, let's not give to them too many pro tips. But a little, yeah, uh, just don't push too hard too fast, and uh, you'll avoid most of I'm, most of those issues. I'm getting told off for telling you how to win, so uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't don't, have to, don't 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 let them win too hard. They have to figure <laughs> it out. <laughs> Do not give the secret <laughs> sauce. But, uh, but yeah, no. Um, and speaking of Tyler One, apparently he's like like giga chat at chess now. Like he's been playing chess like nonstop for the past year, and now he's like in the top like tw like like he's basically in like almost grandmaster stage on chess.com. Isn't he like Giga Chat at League as well? I Probably. I don't have no idea. But <laughs> yeah, I, I I love the Tyler one memes. It's like out of any streamer, they're my favorite. <laughs> this is complete like psychotic breakdowns. I relate so much. <laughs> <laughs> I relate. <clears throat> So the AI target whoever is closest. No, not necessarily. But if you're a destroyer and you're spotted and you are the closest to them as a destroyer, they're going to hit you. Oh, yeah. Like, of course. Nine times out of ten, at least. If you're a DD and you get spotted, nine times out of ten, they're going to shoot you. <laughs> so if you're playing destroyer, don't get spotted. It's not necessarily about who's closest. Yep. Nope. Just, yeah, yeah. so um so yeah that's or we're gonna um or kind of round things up here so if you guys have any final questions for us we'll hang out for a few minutes and then and uh, happy five years yeah happy five years five years cool. um we probably won't be having a stream next monday um because next monday is a public holiday here in the czech republic it's april 1st um so the um so but we'll, but we'll probably have a uh, stream sometime next week but nothing set in stone okay um, what color traces are the new commander guises <laughs> One like of dude for the record right yeah he, we, we have like, like actual notes yeah yeah we've got like, notes on different things, things we've been but, preparing yeah and uh, it's like talking points <laughs> and you're hitting us with the questions we haven't prepared it's such a big update you're gonna have to excuse us we don't have the answer to that right now but yep. if you message me on discord i'll be in the office tomorrow and i will take a look and i'll let you know what color the commander guys traces are yeah Yep. We can only apologize. It's, it's a, like this. This update is probably one of like the most content-heavy updates. We've not even been able to show you everything. There's still a load of cruises we've not played and whatnot. But uh, it's we can't. <laughs> um, Czech Republic, the country of holidays, every other week. No, it's actually like like Czech Republic is the country of holidays at the end of the year. <laughs> just feel like we have a lot of holidays though here. Yeah. Like, like, like. Well, if you think about it, like, there's no holidays in the Czech Republic from um, first of January until April first, and then we don't get like another one until June, and then we get like fifteen in like front in from the space of like September to November. <laughs> Final. Can you work your meme magic on Florida? Uh, I can do my best, but I can't make promises. Oh. Uh, I'm too busy trying to work my meme magic on Perfect Ten right now. So <laughs> I really want to get this ship like just buffed or something funny because of how fast it is uh, i have a question about warhammer is it ever coming back we cannot disclose collaborations because there's so yeah, many different do, elements yeah we can't answer this. any questions like that about color yeah absolutely so. can't answer that so i'm sorry about that so maybe maybe not 
Who knows? How tall is Orochi uh, really? I don't even know. Probably, I don't yeah. know. Maybe he doesn't want us to tell. Maybe yeah, yeah, like probably, a little, it's a, a secret. Orochi secret. secretly doesn't yeah. want to tell. You'll, you'll have to ask him yourself. Have to fly to Prague, come here and see him. Measure with your him eye, with yes. your own eyeballs. Bring a measuring tape. <laughs> don't bring a measuring tape. <laughs> <laughs> That's almost insulting. Like, <laughs> no, no, oh, hello, no. nice to meet you. I brought the measuring tape. <laughs> I, I've got. I have a measure. Like, I don't have a measuring tape myself, so I haven't measured myself in a long time. That'd be good. Sweet, I'd... sweet or unsweet tea. <laughs> Things to say out of context. Sweet tea, sweet tea, every <laughs> time. Sweet tea, no exceptions. And let well, sorry. If it's cold tea, sweet tea. If it's warm tea, unsweet tea. I quite like sweet tea. I'm British, but I like sweet tea. Yeah, I really if, like if Arizona. It's cold, right. Yeah, I don't like warm sweet tea. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like like lemon and peach iced tea. But I also like British hot tea. So, yeah. Uh, will there ever be short tag gets added to the game? No. Or maybe if like it's like a scenario mode. But yeah, because we've had short targets in the past. We have on one of the Halloween modes. We had the catapults that you had to shoot in one of the Transylvania yeah. escorts. Yeah. So we have had them in the past, so maybe in the future, if we ever do like a cooperative yeah. uh, scenario, could be. Yeah, what is uh, Mikoyan's um, pen like compared to other Russian 180s? Mm -hmm. It'll be very similar to Kirov. So not the best Russian 180, but still, uh, it's still a Russian 180 at the end of the day, so it's still going to be monster pen. Um, let's see. I like the Cops 5 emissions a lot. Yep. Yeah. I mean, the Halloween mode in general is really popular. So that's big inspiration for this April mode. Because uh, we could have been very generous and hit you with Racing Legends again. But we thought, you know, we'll, we'll make them suffer a little bit and we'll not give them Racing Legends for a year. But maybe next year we'll give it, <laughs> we'll bring it back. We'll, and we'll, we'll hit them with uh, another cooperative mode they hate so much. So, <laughs> you can, you can, <laughs> we wanted to be cruel and we gave you the, the Let Stellar Clash instead. mold. <laughs> 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 but hey if you really want it we can bring the racing legends back next year any free premium ships for the five years yes mccoy or not mccoy uh my sorry so that is uh tier five yeah this tier five it's basically a fiji minus one turret at tier five um with with uh the crawling smoke generator um yeah so who I made that april event trailer robin Yep, Robinovich. The Salem Robin made the trailer. That was a great troll, yes. Did the intro get you? <laughs> we hope it did. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh, never mind. I oh, thank God. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man. No, yeah, Rob. Like we've like we've all been working our butts off for this update, so. Dude, we've all been so so busy because <laughs> yep. it's like we're so sorry for the quiet update last month, but we hope we've made it up for you with this yep. month because we really yeah, just, worked hard. Just please don't expect it to be every single update. Well, like there's no. pro there's always going to be ups and downs. So, but like because because we are like if we like if if you have every single up like 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 the, or this big, you'll eventually have just burnout and, and then you'll have no updates. Like, <laughs> generally, the reason why this update is so big is because the last update was quieter and we had some room to get some things in. So. Yep. If there's ever a quiet update, it's usually followed by something a bit bigger or a big project we've been working on. Like yep. even with the fleets update, where we added fleets, yep. I recall the update before that was really quiet. And yep. People were complaining the update was really bad, and then yeah, all of a sudden, like, "We're fleet like, three, and like, then training rooms, fleets, yep. <laughs> like all these huge features." Does Does Robin have any have formal video editing education, or is he self taught? Robin is mostly self taught, um, so uh, as far as I remember. Yeah, I, rem I, I remember him saying that he taught himself. Yeah, yeah. I think he had like like a few months of university, but I think it was. I don't think he was doing film university. So ask him. Yeah, like, but just, uh, yeah, of course, just ask. Honestly, him. if you just just if, shoot him a message, if you just DM'd him and said, "Hey, I love your videos. Were you self taught?" I'm sure he'll be more than happy to tell you. Like he's yeah. he doesn't hide. Nope. However, we are actually ahead of our time, so we should be getting it off. Yeah. So, um, on the topic of fleet battles, are they coming back? Yeah. Um, there's a little blurb in the in the patch notes. Um, fleet battles aren't gone, but um, so but there's um, some work that needs to be done on them um, uh, more, and so and the like 
there's so fleet bottles are are a weird situation where um it's not like arena or um or ranked mode where you can just kind of hop into a fleet battle there you know yet yeah, or fleet battle is a whole orchestration there's a whole ritual to it in terms of actually getting five people together playing the games and then swapping people in and out and that sort of thing so um so fleet battles naturally have less players to them um, which means that it's um, it's a little bit more difficult to bring them regularly um, whenever they're competing with um, things like arena or ranked. So um, so there's things that we want to do to make improvements to them, and so they're probably going to be a bit on the rare side, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, but they will return. It's just gonna have to be patient. Sorry. And on that note. We're gonna call it because we oh we can sit here and answer questions all night, but we yeah. I'm sure oh, we want to go home. Question or question here first. The tier three three free ship from mobile, free for us on, on our console players. Win can't say win of course, but um, yes, we haven't forgotten. It'll eventually be for console uh, as well. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. one of them because one of them is mobile exclusive. There's Charleston M. Yeah, Charleston exclusive. M will be mobile exclusive, but that's a tier two. Uh, Vondertan will be yeah. available for console. So, but. Yeah. Thank you for coming for to the stream, everyone. Happy five years of Legends. It should be April 16th, I think, is technically the, the birthday, but it's during the update. So happy five years, everyone. Thanks for being with us. Um, it's been a blast. And here's to five more. Here's to f five incredible years. And I'm going to send you out with uh, the CGI instead of the outro. So... Uh...